Good evening all. Today I've been playing with the two Bluetooth smartwatches which uh, came in in my uh, two recent post bags. I think this was post bag 59, post bag 61 for the green one. Trying to do a little bit more than just connecting the app that comes with these. Uh, trying to sort of investigate the Bluetooth LE protocol and find out a bit more about what these things do and how they work. So the orange one is OLED, uh, they're both OLED, they both have what appears to be an identical OLED display. Now I've got a bit of data here, uh, the orange one uses the NXP Quintic QN9021 chip and uh, if you want to see the post bag on this it's post bag 59. But uh, this one has a little button on the side which you press, that shows you the time and date screen and the time and date on this is absolutely wonderful because you can't set it. You don't set it. You don't have to. As soon as you pair up the app on your phone with the device, the device pulls the time and date from your phone. So that, I'd love that. I love the fact that you don't set this watch because setting clocks is a bit of a fiddle. So uh, you've got the time. You've also got steps. I've only done 14 steps today. I haven't been wearing it. Uh, distance, calories burnt, sleep time, how effectively you've slept. That's what's on this watch. Now, the other one, unfortunately, if you watch Postbag 61, this has a Texas Instruments CC2541 chip in it. Um, you'll remember possibly that I broke the touch sensor and unfortunately I now can't switch the thing on. However, after reading the manual, I discovered that there's a gesture which switches this thing on, what you do is you turn it as though you're turning your wrist and then you hold it still as though you're looking at it. And it gives you the time and date and then all the other functions following. Let's try that again. Okay, not enough turning or perhaps not enough delay. Time and date, steps 28, distance traveled, calories burnt and something about running time, I think that one is. Now a little bit more data, the orange one uses the app MovNow Plus and the green one uses the app iFit. Now iFit is quite an impressive app and uh, they appear to be a company that sell a range of uh, fitness tracking watches but they're all quite expensive. Uh, so for this to be an iFit, not quite sure whether this is a clone, it's certainly not one of their uh, described products on their website. Now I've managed to get MovNow Plus working and talking to this device, but it only works on one of my uh, devices. I can't get it to work on tablets. It'll work on my Nexus 4 phone, so I'll just run that up in a moment. Um, I've got the iFit app running on my phone and tablet, but I can't make a connection with the device because when the app comes up, it says, which iFit model do you have? And of course, the models are all iFit's very expensive models and not this cheap, nasty thing. But um, I'm still working on that. So here's MovNow Plus. This should be able to talk to the uh, orange watch. Device disconnected, please re reconnect. Oh, please turn on Bluetooth. I'm gonna to have to do that first. Now it gives you these drinking reminders. It's time to drink water, which are quite handy. So let's turn on Bluetooth. Okay. And attempt to connect. Is it going to pick up those 14 steps that I've done today? Well, it's struggling, isn't it? Right, I have, with a bit of fiddling about, managed to get it connected. Um, it has picked up the 14 steps I've done today in one very short burst, apparently. Uh, the 31 minutes of sleep duration. And then here are the drinking reminders, the sedentary reminders, wake up reminders, and other stuff like that. So this has communicated with the watch. Now there's one other thing which is quite fun that you can do. Uh, you can do my device and then this catch a final shot, which um, is a selfie mode. Where am I? There I am. I can't see my own face. There I am. Uh, and then what happens is if you press the button on the watch, the watch shows that it's in selfie mode, press the button and the phone takes a photo, like that. So um, yes, I mean, bit of fun. That's the app, 
Uh, it's mainly sort of focused on health and running and fitness and all that stuff. Um, but it doesn't really show you what's communicating between the devices. You can see that they are communicating, particularly with this, um, I think it's dropped out of that mode now, but with the um, selfie mode app, uh, yes, you can see that they are talking to each other. Now, I've also been playing around with a couple of um, Bluetooth LE discovery apps today. And the best one I found is this one, the NRF master control panel. So let's come out of that and actually run that app up. So when the app is running and it's uh, scanning, oh, I think I've just stopped it scanning, let's scan it again. It immediately finds the iFit, it seems to uh, be able to get the, in, uh, the information from that automatically. This one it can't see unless you shake it around and then it seems to liven up or if you press the button on it, uh, it seems to come alive and then it can talk to it. It does seem that this one needs to either have the gyro activated or the button activated before it appears in the list. So let's connect to uh, one of these devices. Let's connect to the iFit. So we press connect and it says connecting, discovering services. So here are the services. So this device has a generic access uh, protocol, a generic attribute protocol, and then unknown services. Uh, let's just take a look in here. We've got, for example, device name. Now I can press that button and do a read and it pulls back the value iFit. Uh, so that's the uh, device name. Uh, there's various other things here. Uh, I'm not sure that many of these are gonna make sense. Let's try a read of that. That's come back unknown, a read of that one, just numerical data. Uh, you can do a write data to these things as well, if I can tap that button in the right place. And I can send text out to it, but it's not gonna understand it, so uh, I've not got a response from anything yet by sending stupid words. Uh, uh, here's a peripheral preferred connection parameters, including the preferred uh, time interval between uh, connections. Now, these unknown services are not uh, the standard uh, documented services, so these are going to be specific to these devices. And it's quite possible that this right one here, for example, may be the one that writes date and time information to there, and the read one is the one that's going to read all of the accumulated steps and uh, distance information from the unit. Uh, let's connect to the orange watch, the Quintic BLE watch. That's this one here. Uh, this one has two unknown services. Um, again, we've got a multi-read service here. So I imagine that's reading multiple packets to pull in all of the data that's been accumulated by this watch, the step and the sleep time data and so on. Now this is all jolly good fun and um, you know you can learn a lot by connecting to these devices and wading through all the different um, protocols and services and attributes and all that sort of stuff but it doesn't really feel like you're in there at the coal face and it's also not very sort of electronics-y is it? Um, you know there's just apps and devices but wait a minute what's this? A third device has appeared called Julian. That's interesting and it also has a very peculiar MAC address which reads dead face babe. Hmm. Now I'm going to turn this tablet around because uh, in the other orientation we actually get a graph uh, in addition to the, uh, the listed devices so I'll put that uh, like that just for the moment. So what exactly is Julian? Well, interestingly, it's actually this. It's an Arduino with an Nordic Semiconductor NRF 24LO1 Plus module plugged into it, and a little bit of Arduino code that makes this device, which is not a Bluetooth LE device, it makes it spoof that it is a Bluetooth LE device. It's a crude fudge, but uh, it's ever, so good, ever such good fun because uh, we're spoofing Bluetooth LE on a non-Bluetooth device. So how do you make an Arduino Uno plus an NRF 24LO1 Plus make like it's a Bluetooth LE device? Well, I started here, Dmitry Grinberg, bit-banging Bluetooth low energy, faking Bluetooth LE. And uh, he explains how uh, 
although the Nordic NRF24 LO1 Plus isn't a Bluetooth LE device, it's got uh, enough attributes uh, such as the uh, you know the general frequency 2.4 gigahertz, channels are one meg apart, modulation is GFSK, data rate one megabit per second, and so on and so on and so on, uh, that we can make it appear to be Bluetooth LED. Now the code for this is not specifically Arduino, it's just some fairly heavy duty C. Uh, he's had to implement uh, CRC, uh, a data whitening function, and the advertisement packet payload. So uh, this doesn't translate directly to Arduino, but uh, so fortunately uh, Sandeep Mystery has picked this up and written an Arduino NRF24L01BLE, which is essentially the same code, but uh, modified to uh, work directly on Arduino. And I will put links to um, both Dimitri uh, and uh, Sandeep's uh, pages. And if you create a sketch using uh, Sandeep's code and then mess about with things like the MAC address here, dead face babe. And uh, further down here, the device name, which I've changed to Julian. You can, if you can get your code to compile and everything to work, get an NRF24 LO1 Plus to make uh, the tablet believe that it's a Bluetooth LE device. Now, this doesn't do a lot. You can't actually connect to this because uh, what this is putting out is a very cut down version of Bluetooth LE. It's simply advertising itself with its name, so it doesn't connect. But if you spend the entire day messing around with all this stuff, uh, the devices, the apps, and the uh, Arduino fudge, you do start to get the feeling that you're just starting to get a hang of Bluetooth LE. Now, some time ago I bought this. It's the uh, BLE 400 uh, Bluetooth 4.0 NRF51822 development board. And I've not done anything with it because I just haven't been able to fathom out how to start working with this thing. But uh, after today's experiments with the, uh, the watches and the app and the uh, Arduino fudge, I'm kind of back into this now and it's uh, I'm going to start looking more into Bluetooth LE and see if I can uh, make a start on this thing. But for the moment, that's it. Cheerio.